for the player and then we take a look at the the play uh the game and then we look at the replay render okay so turpets characteristics one of the most fun ships in the game rob rob how did you get the turpets tell everybody please i uh traded my moskva for it he traded in a tier 10 cruiser to get the turpets with the idea just... that i would be able to get, get the uh moskva back because it was a coal ship. Moskva's a coal ship, so he figured he will get the Moskva back via coal. And how much did you spend for the turpits, doubloons money-wise? None. Zero. So he took advantage of the ship traded program and figured I'll, he'll just grind out the coal, got himself a turpits for free. Now let's let's talk about the turpits. One of the most fun ships that you can do at tier eight right great secondaries torpedoes good armor good main battery relatively fast or maneuverable decent concealment um she's one of the one of the original premium ships at tier eight in world of warships yet she is still relevant to this day it says something something about turpits now let's take a look yes grunty do you remember Turpit's release day, a.k.a. IGN Destroyer Heaven? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I remember the day the Turpits was released, and matchmaking was literally everything but one or two Turpitses. And then there were those other destroyers that just had a field day. We called it the Turpocalypse. <coughs> Maverick says, I wouldn't trade a ship for Turpits. I mean, so... If you were a hardcore free-to-play player and you look at the trade-in program, if you've got the ability to get a ship for coal, technically that's a free resource as long as you're not paying for it. Get your turpets. I get it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm with you, Maverick. I wouldn't have traded it. When Rob said he did that, I couldn't believe it at first. And then when he said, oh, it's a coal ship, I can regrind it. I'm like, okay, fine. All right, let's take a look at your build in the Turpets, Rob. You have gone for main armaments mod one. I like this choice because Turpets has torpedoes. You absolutely want to protect your torpedo launcher. So main armaments mod one is the way to go. Others might prefer to go for Ox mod. Ox mod does not protect your torpedoes. Ox mod is great on Bismarck, FDG, Kerfurst, Preussen uh, for keeping your secondaries alive, but they don't have torpedoes, so. It's a tough choice with the turpids, really. Like, if you play for a secondary spec on the turpids, you kind of want to protect your secondaries. Mm -hmm. But I totally get the argument that you want to protect your torpedo tubes as well. Yes. Yeah. And on like... the other hand, the torpedo tubes are so squishy, you might lose them anyway because they're so exposed. That is true. Um, although, it, when it comes to those last final seconds in a close quarters, I want my torpedoes to be alive. So yeah, I'd rather that, use that if I can. The pros are fine, I think. On, the, on mm -hmm. the Bismarck, I would definitely go for the auxiliary mod. On the torpedoes, yep. I can definitely see it both ways. Right. My own personal rule of thumb is if it has torpedoes, I do main armaments. If it's got, if it doesn't have torpedoes, I do aux mod. But it, it's up to you. Now. You've got damage control, makes sense. You've got secondaries, makes sense. Steering gears, questionable. And then concealment modification one, makes sense. Steering gears. All right, my general rule of thumb for, for any sort of maneuverability, I want under 15 seconds for battleships, under 10 seconds for cruisers, under five seconds for destroyers. So let's just drop this for a second. And your uh, rudder shift time is 15.98. So I can actually see the argument for doing rudder shift time. Now, a lot of players will instead go for damage control so you don't burn as long. But frankly, I'd rather be able to angle my ship to deflect incoming fire. So I like the idea of steering mirrors, frankly. I think that's good. Yeah, and uh, I like the damage con on secondary ships because you usually don't have the captain spec for the basics of survivability mm -hmm. so to compensate for that i like the damage control mod but it really comes down to personal 
preference and how comfortable one is with turning their ship with the given rudder shift. Absolutely. Now, this is Bismarck with Hydro. Then I would think rudder shift is makes perfect sense because you want to be able to dodge the torpedoes you're spotting with your Hydro. Tarpets, you can make the argument either way. Again, the nice thing about this game is it comes down to how you like to play the ship. And there's no right way to play the ship, which is good. All right, let's look at your commander build. Is this loot, Jens? Yes. I Thank I put on this. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. Now, loot Yens on a battleship, especially a secondary battleship, is fantastic, right? Why? Because of its buffed skill for preventative maintenance. Now, preventative maintenance helps your turrets, secondary, or sorry, turrets, torpedoes, rudder, engine from being incapacitated. It's the torpedoes that you care about most, which synergizes well with your uh, main armaments mod one. Also, there's Grease the Gears, which isn't as important. Now, you are going for a secondary build. Demolition Expert, Grease the Gears, buff Grease the Gears. Secondaries, Manual Secondaries, Concealment, and then Preventative Maintenance. It's not a bad build. Yeah, it's a build that works, especially for like the Rupert, which is what I've trained this commander for. Okay. Personally, like fire prevention more than concealment. And you could do either one, yeah. Uh, it's usually like the last four points go like. You would usually drop the one point skill and take three four point skills in a traditional secondary build. Personally, what I would do, Rob, is I would do adrenaline rush. I would drop demolition and grab either fire prevention or emergency repair. Probably fire prevention. I'd probably do something like this. And the reason for that is your 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 pyrotechnician or demolition expert, it's only one percent you can do that with flags. Um I would much rather ensure that my, my ship doesn't burn in four places, right? Um instead of three. And Adrenaline Rush is a huge buff to your secondaries. So, I might go for this. So, this is Ruprecht Captain you said, right? Yes. And it's gonna go eventually on the Schlieffen, I assume. Yeah, that's the... Uh, that Why idea. do you do IFHG on Schlieffen? Because it's 105s. So, that's the other thing I was just about to mention, actually is if you you said you know if you're going to be doing this on the german battle cruiser line ifhe is a good idea so are you it planning on putting this on your sleeping it helps with the 105s on turpits too yeah here let me drop this for a sec so ifhe brings you up to 32 millimeters of pen versus 26. now if it's a ranked battle at only tier 8, which is what we're about to see, you probably don't really need it. It, it, it helps, but it's not fully necessary. But if you're in a game with tier 10s or something, um, this penetrates tier 10 cruiser armor, and it penetrates some battleship armor as well. Right? I think you drop one of the four point skills for it though, and not adrenaline rush. But Absol I'm not a hundred percent sure. Or you just drop the grease the gears. I'm I'm not a hundred percent familiar with how the build actually goes. So grease the gears, in my opinion, isn't that important because it really only helps if you're up close and personal with an enemy. So I might drop grease the gears uh in favor of fire prevention, and I might do a build like this. Corgan runs steering gears mod on Mighty Mo. You have a habit of contesting caps and hunting, killing destroyers. Then it makes perfect sense. I present details nicely. Oh, thank you, Bigglesworth. Okay, are are we uh, good to move on? Rob, you're not wearing protection. I like the suspense of wondering if I'm going to randomly explode. <laughs> but I don't detonate often. Grunty, how triggered are you right now, knowing that you played a whole bunch of games with Rob earlier today? 
I'm pointing out that each time I, my ship exploded, it wasn't because of a detonation. Anyway, everything else is fine. Your flag choices are good. I wouldn't change anything up, frankly. I would probably drop the fire chance flags and put on the ramming and the detonation, like... So, especially considering you're playing ranked tier. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. So ramming's a good idea. Ramming's a great idea. I, I get it. And anti-debt, always a good idea, especially in ranked. Personal opinion. So, yeah, so you could drop these two and pick these two up. Okay, fair enough. Let's get to your, your replay, huh, Rob? Last thing I need is to lose like 90k a match yes totally getting you there all right rob can you tell us a little bit about your thinking early on in this game well my idea was to basically go down most of the uh, three four line if i remember correctly and just sort of be a brick wall with a can okay so, the enemy team, Massachusetts, Bernardino, Zeton, Depayev, Marker, and a sub, U190. Your team, Lennon, U, Gascon, Irian, Cossack, and a sub of your own. Now, if you want to go down the 3-4 line, I think you need to tell your teammates, especially your, your teammate battleships, that that is your plan, right? Sorry, uh, my wife is texting me right now. But yeah, I think you need to like coordinate this with your team and, and just kind of say, hey, this is what I want to do. Because if you don't, you might get everybody following you and you really don't want that, right? No, you definitely want to split up your battleships here to create crossfires. Exactly. Like all in one place. Exactly. So I feel like... Communication right now is very important. Also, it, it didn't matter here, but if you plan going down 3-4, bring your guns on the other side right away so you can shoot, like, your guns turned all the way to the right before you turn them down to the left. If there was anything spotted, they wouldn't mm. have been able to shoot. So there's an early spot on a cruiser. You wouldn't be able to take advantage of that, is what you're saying. At least not with the back guns. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, wait, wait. I've, I'd actually seen that Chap Chapiev in the previous match. And? I killed him with a sub. So okay. you decided to spare him this time? Right, yeah, that's yeah. a... Have you seen his name? Fan sub. Okay. Sinbad31, thank you for the follow. Make sure you type exclamation point ticket. Uh, take it in for the giveaway. But, I mean, more importantly, I would have shot the Chapayev there. 100%. Zeton, I don't care about. Um, Boro Dino going broadside to you? Yes, please. Oh, don't track the shells. Fire your rear turrets. You're wasting a lot of time tracking those shells. Come on, turn already. Rob, why aren't you... I wasn't sure if there was... Uh... The marker hadn't moved around yet, or hadn't noticed the marker. You didn't even know that you were getting shot at because you were following your shells until the shells popped up right, right in your face. Right. <laughs> like, get your rear turret. Buy your rear turrets, then follow. Like, it, honestly, if that's something that's important to you, fine. But the Borodino. Honestly, dude, is not a threat right now. Borodino is just hiding away. He's not a problem. If he's in the middle of the map, he's a threat because he can raid our stuff. He's not. So... It's also, as a habit, like, if you want to see where your shells hit for your next salvo, that's perfectly fine. But you don't need to follow your shells all the way through. Just, just zoom back into your shells right before they are about to hit. Yeah. Alright, Chapayev broadside and 
Nice Citadel and the Chapayev. That helps a lot. You would have stayed at the five line a bit longer. Rob is getting himself into a point where the Borodino could end up on his flank. But frankly, it's not important. Borodino is not going to do anything to you. So I like the idea of focusing on the Zetan and the Chapayev here. Uh, these shells probably won't even clear. No, they didn't clear the island. Yeah, I was hoping I would get at least a couple over and I just. Yeah, no. Nope. Wasn't Control click on the marker. There you go. It took you a long time. You've had the ability to get those extra secondaries for a while. I kind of missed out on that. Ouch. For, again, forget about the Borodino. Focus on the marker. Focus on the Chapayev right now. As long as you, like, walk towards the Borodino, you take him out of the battle. Your primary guns are loaded, but you're not shooting. Why aren't you shooting, Rob? What are you doing? I think this is indecisive and it's not more important to shoot. You're going to waste your entire turrets that are available, by the way, so that you can torpedo the Borodino. I want you to think about that for a second. There are so many better things you could do right now. Fire your turrets, then go to your, your torpedoes. All right, you took out one of his turrets. Congrats. And he just wants you to kill him, so that's kind of fun. Ooh, yeah, and secondary go. Oh, you didn't quite kill him. There he goes. This was, was my, like, third or fourth match in this tip as well, so... It yeah, was very shortly after I got it. But this is no this has nothing to do with the ship. Yeah, I know. This is... If your primary guns are ready, especially if you are able to shoot somebody and you're spotted, shoot the damn person and then go to torpedoes. Like, you lost a good amount of, of, of damage potential there. Fortunately for you, the rest of the team kind of picked up and, and you know, whatever. You literally had your front guns pointed directly at the destroyer looking at them and you turned them away all the way to the battleship. Right. Like, like you could have literally fired and by the time they were back on the battleship, they would have been removed. Exactly. Now, the Zetan's able to heal up because you fired a little bit low. But now you managed to get the kill. There you go. Okay. Time to heal. You see the torpedoes coming. I would heal immediately. Because you know it's going to hurt. Double strike. Wow. That was close. For the double strike, I mean. Mm. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Rob. What were you going to say? I... I don't know. Okay. I, I think the big thing that we can uh, give you for feedback on this game, dude, is just focus. It feels like you're, you're doing too many things at once, and you really need to be able to focus on a couple of things. As Patton says, it's a good game overall. Yes. Um, but I really feel like you lost track of targets early. You could have shot the Borodino with your rear turrets, right? You didn't. Instead, you just followed your front turrets. Later, you could have shot the Chapayev or the Zetan, preferably the Chapayev, with your guns. And instead, you went to torpedoes. Tea drinker. Let's do it. So, I don't know. I mean, is am I missing something? No, it, it, it's actually really weird to me. Like, on the on the one hand, it's hyper-focused tunnel vision when there's one target there. Like, that front salvo at the Borodino at the start. And then, 
later on when the destroyer pops out and the battleship is there and there's multiple things to do mm -hmm. it almost feels like it's kind of lost and then it's like overwhelmed <laughs> right no you're you're absolutely correct but um hopefully robbie gave you some feedback on this game and something to think about you know turbids is a fun ship and, and you did good work right yeah i think it was I remember I was stop the team. It looks to I me, by the way, there was a lot of lot of damage in the destroyer. That Borodino was all yours. I I believe that is top XP. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Rob, for sending that in and all your support and hanging out. 